All right, welcome back. This is Mr. Cisneros. In the last video, what we worked on was adding the presentation exploded view onto our drawing sheet. We also created a parts list and we added balloons to point to all of the different parts of our of our speaker box. So in this video now what we're going to do is we're going to finish up our working drawing by adding dimensions to all of our multi views. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that IDW. Uh, it's right here. Uh, if you click on that folder button, you can open it from here. I usually like to do a file open. And then in my speaker box folder, I should have the IDW. And that's this one. Remember, the picture has the multi views on it. So I'm going to click on that, click on open. And let's just review, let's review all of the different sheets that we have so far so we can make sure that we're all caught up. Um, if you see that I have a sheet that maybe you don't have, try watching some of the previous videos where we complete those different sheets. Um, so let's see, it says the uh, BOM view used by this drawing is missing from the following referenced assemblies. The parts list and balloons based on these assemblies reflect the last known values and will no longer update to changes in the referenced files. And it's talking about an IAM. It's talking about my assembly file. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to see what it's talking about. Um, and you can see it's, I think it's referencing this right here. This is the IAM and it has that exclamation point. Uh, bomb view is disabled. I wonder what happens if I double click this. Bomb view is disabled, reference assembly. This bomb view must be enabled to proceed. Do you wish to enable the bomb view? So I'm going to say OK. And this window comes up, which is referencing my assembly. Um, I'm going to click OK. And now that exclamation point goes away. Um, I'm honestly not sure exactly why that happens sometimes. Uh, because if you look, if I go to my file and I try to open something else, um, you'll see that my, my assembly file, which is right here, is located in the same folder. Uh, for some reason, it lost, it lost its like connection with that assembly. Uh, with the with the parts list or sorry with the yeah I guess it was the parts list right um, the information here that was being obtained by the assembly it lost its connection to the drawing file um, so I guess I just have to I had to link it again so that little yellow exclamation point that we had there all I did was I double clicked it it asked me do you do I want to reconnect with that assembly file and I say okay uh, typically, it's it's that usually is a big problem if you ever move some of these files away from uh, the speaker box folder or the project folder. So, example, if I try to move this, or even if I try to rename it after the fact, that usually uh, it almost like corrupts the file. So um, it's important, like once you save it and once you you locate it in that specific project folder. Don't really mess around with the name or the location. Leave it as, as it is, because um, if you change the name, if you move it, Inventor will kind of, it'll freak out and say, hey, where did this go? Where did um, initials underscore speaker box go? Um, so like say you, say you renamed it initials underscore speaker box project. Even something like that, Inventor will be like, oh no, it, it disappeared. I'm, I can't find initials underscore speaker box anymore. All I can see is initials underscore speaker box project. And even though it's like the same name, uh, you know, Inventor is a, it's like a computer. It's, it's smart, but not that smart to understand that you just simply change the name. So, so be careful with that. Uh, sometimes that will again happen if you rename things after the fact or move them around after the fact. So keep stuff in here and leave the names uh, as is. Okay. Um, I don't need to open anything. That, that connection is fixed. All right. So let's take a look at our sheets. So I'm going to go and double click sheet one. That's what sheet one contains. It's an isometric view um, with this title. Uh, sheet two, I'm going to zoom out. That contains just a multi view of the assembly. So front, top, bottom, right side, left side. Um, we filled in the title there. Good. Sheet three, here's our multi-view. Sheet four, here's another multi-view. And sheet five, uh, another multi-view. 
and sheet six. Another multi -view. So these will be very simple to dimension, but that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So I'm going to go to sheet three to start, and this is the front uh, view, or the sorry, the front panel. And here's our front view, here's our top, and then here's our right side. Please try to remember that that is the orientation that you typically want to place your multi views in. You usually want your front view to be at the bottom left corner of your drawing sheet, and then you want your top view right above it, and then you want your right side view to the right of it. And now we need to think about if we were to give this to somebody, if like maybe it was a woodworker or the, the, the builder for this project, and they were in the wood shop and they were going to try to um, create this. Maybe they, they um, you know, maybe they wanted to build it. They have this, this sheet of MDF and they want to go and cut these holes out. They want to cut out the rectangle. Um, how would they go about it? Well, uh, the, one of the best ways to communicate that to somebody that's trying to build this would be to add dimensions. But you would need to add enough dimensions for them to understand all of the design. You can't just have, you know, your width and your, your height. You'd have to have a little bit more. Like, think about the location. The location of these holes. They would definitely need to know that because they'll probably have a ruler. They'll have a ruler and they'll be able to mark the center of where that hole is. That'll help them. Same thing with here. So location. Um, diameter. The diameter of the circle would be very important as well. So let's start dimensioning these. I'm going to go to annotate. And I'm going to go to dimension. And when I do this, all I need to know is that I it's almost like I have a tape measure. I have a tape measure and I need to know from one point to another point how how what's that distance so for instance if I wanted to have the width of this entire um, front this front panel I would need to know from here to here that gives me dimension of 14 so I'm gonna lift that up uh, right there you can see I get those dotted lines. I usually typically like to click when I get those dotted lines. It's almost like it snaps on for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click and I place my dimension. Again, all I did was I clicked here, I clicked here, and then a third click to place the dimension. Now, if I wanted to get the height, I wanted to get the height, what I could do is I can go and say, okay, what is, maybe I'll do it on the, on the right side view. Typically, you'll want your, the majority as a rule, you, a majority of your dimensions on the front view. And uh, your front view is usually dictated by um, being the surface or the face that has the most detail, the surface that you could see the most detail. And that's definitely this view. So this view, looking at it here, is 100% the front view because we can see the holes. Um, we can see a lot of the detail here. Whereas if you look at the top, you don't, very, you don't see very much. On the right side, you don't, you don't really see much either. Um, because we're going to have to locate these holes, I do want to maybe use this view here for my uh, height. So I'm going to click on this line. And here's another way to do it. So you can actually just click on the entire line and then get that dimension. All right, so just like that. Um, if you wanted to, you could also just click from here, from that top line to this bottom line, and that would give you it as well. Um, but with that, it was just one click and then I can make the dimension. The one tricky thing is if you snap on and you get a green bubble, it won't work the same. So when you're using dimension tool, try to avoid clicking on those green bubbles. Sometimes they they let you click on that and it's, it's not what you intended to uh, measure. So just be careful with that. Um, and then what about the thickness? Thickness, I guess, can be located on the top view. So here's another uh, example of like what I mean. So if I clicked on this, you can see I'm it's waiting for me to click a second time. If I just wanted that line dimensioned, I'd have to click so it's red, and then I can get it. And let's see, it is 0.5, so that's good. Click that. Uh, notice also where I'm placing my dimensions. Um, the 14, I'm not placing down here. The, the 7, I'm not placing on the outside. And um, the 0 0.5, I'm not, facing, I'm not placing it on the outside. Typically, the, by rule, like by like good CAD will tell you, you want your dimensions located within 
or inside your views. So you can see that this seven inch height is in between my front and my right side. This 14 is in between my front and my top. Um, this 0.5 thickness is located in between my top view and my isometric. Um, it's, it's kind of like, it's like a, you know, a, just, it's just kind of a rule to follow. It's been a rule for a very long time and it just makes things look a little bit more organized. Um, okay. Uh, one thing that we do have to add when we do have, um, holes like this, we want to have like a center mark. We want to have a center mark on these holes. So then if we ever need a dimension to them, when we're, um, when we're trying to locate them, we have that to click on. So that, that center mark line or center mark tool is what I should say. Center mark tool is going to be located right here. So center mark, all you have to do is you click on this and then you click on the hole that you want the center mark to be located on. So this hole right there's a center mark, right there's a center mark, and then right there's a center mark. Okay. Um, any holes like that, you definitely want to add center marks onto. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and locate these holes now. And um, because these are the exact same holes, now we're going to get into something called overdimensioning. There, it's possible to not only you know give information that's not enough, you could give too much information, like redundant information, which is technically not you know, it's not going to mess somebody's up, somebody's design up if they try to follow it. It's just going to be a little bit too messy. You're going to add uh, unnecessary dimensions um, to your to your uh, drawing sheet, which you want to kind of avoid. It just gets it just gets a little too much. So here's uh, here's an example of it. We have two holes that are exactly the same. I'm not going to have to locate, um, or sorry, I'm not going to have to dictate what the diameter of both of them are. So what I can do is I can go and say, okay, click on this, and it's going to give me the diameter. I'm going to put this corner right, I'm going to line it up with that corner. I'm going to click. Um, you know what? We talked about it being on the inside. Let's do this one instead. Let's put it out this way. There we go. And same thing with this hole. Put that. Um, yeah, let's put that right there. And then we also have to locate it. So what we can do is we can say from the center of this hole to this line, that is going to be point or 3.5. We can also say the center of this to this bottom edge is 3.5. And then I think that is going to be it. Um, what you could do, what you could do like with this whole diameter, just, just to make it clear that this needs to be four as well, you could go ahead and double click this four and you could add like a, like a X two, right? Times two, meaning, you know, Hey, don't forget that you have another hole here that's also going to be four inches in diameter. Uh, but yeah, we have this located. Um, this will kind of, this times two will let you know that the location will be the same as well. So then when the person's looking like, oh, where's the location of this one? Um, you can, they can just say, okay, it's going to be 3.5 from, from here to here. It's going to be 3.5 from here to here. Okay. Um, and then, you know, that lets it know that let, that lets us know that it's going to be dead center um, height wise because our total height is going to be seven. All right. Um, I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, make sure you include all of these dimensions. I'll leave it right there. Let me try to zoom a little bit out. There we go. I'll leave it right there for you guys to look at. Those are all of the dimensions that we would require. If somebody was going to try to build this, um, this is this is it. They wouldn't need any more or any less. So just some rules of dimensioning again that we went over. Um, we would like to make sure that our front view is going to be the one with the most detail. We want to make sure that our dimensions are going to be located in between our views. 
we want to make sure we don't over or under dimension. We want to give just enough information, right? We don't, if, if we were going to locate this hole, that would just make it a little bit too messy, just redundant information. You want to be careful of over dimensioning. And um, if you noticed, kind of like in this situation, right here, the 14, the 0.75, the 3.5, there's a lot of stuff going on over here you want to do it in this order where the smaller dimensions are inside and the bigger dimensions are on the outside okay if you had it the other way around it would it would look you'd have lines crossing one another and that that can also get a little bit messy so just a couple of rules of dimensioning in the other videos in the next video i'm going to show you how to dimension the other ones which are going to be a lot simpler because they're just rectangles so we'll see you in the next video take it easy Thank you.